Building a design system is no easy task, and if you're building one for the first time, it might be super scary. Because in reality, you don't really know if all the components you are building, are they good for your team? Are you breaking them apart in a way that they are usable by everyone? Uh, are you breaking them in a way so you don't repeat yourself? Because that's the point of design system, you should not repeat yourself, you should have one source of truth. So. If you are wondering if you are doing the right thing, please stick around because I have a little decision framework prepared for you that should help you compose your components and whole design system in a way that suits you and your team. Here we are in Figma. So in this example, we are gonna design top navigation bar. And we have many movable states here. If we go from left to right, we have logo, we have search bar, and then we have some buttons. In this example, um, I used only three UI elements because um, it's usually like that in landing sites and it's very easy to then explain. So if you look at logo, it's probably not gonna change no matter who or from where is looking at the website. So we're just gonna leave it here, baked in this navigation bar component. And then if you look at search bar, we know that search bar has different states like typing, activated or something like that. So it's better to separate it into a different component. And then we have buttons over here. Well, we can imagine then that if user is logged in, for example, these buttons might be something else. We might have only one button or color change or something else. So it might be wise to uh, extract this into another component. Why we want to do that in the first place? Well, in Figma, if you name your components uh, correctly and then put them in one master component, then you can easily, by right click or using right a sidebar, change to another component. I'm gonna show you just in a second what I mean by that if you never uh, encountered it. Second step in uh, making scalable and bulletproof components is deciding how strict you need to be. What I mean by that is here I have two examples. They're exactly the same uh, designs and then in left one we can have situation where you just communicate with your teammates. You know what, if user is logged in, just, you know, go here, click and change color, or if needed, you just hide it or hide the button or not, and that's it. That's a little bit dangerous because somebody might forget uh, what are the styles when user is logged in. They might change and then you forget to communicate that change to everybody else. If something changes, then you need to manually go into every override and change everything in a new style. So it's very, very dangerous when it comes to keeping consistency. But at the same time, it's maybe maybe a little bit faster. Not 100% sure about that, but it's maybe a little bit liberating. You get to maybe experiment and tweak stuff, so maybe you can uh, get better visuals or stuff like that. But in my opinion, you should go with uh, this example I'm going to show you. So we have exactly the same situation, but if we drill down to these two buttons, in instance uh, panel, there is a drop down, and if I click on it, we can see that I have two related components. And as mentioned, I got this by using uh, a proper naming convention. I'm going to show you in a second um, how I made it. And I can just change the user logged in and that's it. I don't need to think about it at all. If I'm a designer, I just select this and I know that I'm using up-to-date designs and this is how it should look. If something supposed to be changed, then we just go to master of these two buttons and we just change it. And let's go to my components to see how I name them. Name right slash default, name right slash user logged in and I just put them in uh, this master component and that's it. You, I can easily swap between those two because of this naming convention. Everything that's named uh, exactly the same and then has forward slash uh, will appear in drop-down as, as seen over here. 
and that's it you can you can use the same stuff for uh, search or whatever you might have in your designs so this is basically it this is super simple decision framework and of course with time you're gonna learn more about which uh, states your components could have and it will evolve definitely it's super hard to nail it from the first try you need to be aware 100% what's happening in order to make it correctly but by using this decision framework uh, you will likely be very close to what end result should be it's possible that maybe in a few weeks or months you have to go back and maybe tweak something because you realize that it would be so nice if you would have something else in this drop down i just showed you thanks for checking this video if you liked it please subscribe and leave me thumbs up and also if you're into podcasts i have a podcast that's called design party and it's a brand new podcast i started it like i think month and a half or two months ago with my friend who is living in stockholm we mainly talk about design so it's worth checking it out and um, until next time bye bye